What's up guys, it's your favorite cube coach. Welcome back to another student before and after. Let's go do this thing. So welcome back to the channel guys. If you guys are new to Cube Golf Japan, we do a bunch of videos like this every single week. So what you gotta go do is hit the little red subscribe button, smash the like button, please leave a comment, and as always, please share the video, it really does help. Let's hop into the first part of this video. So welcome back to another student before and after. So we got a good one for you guys today. I think this student really resembles uh, quite a common theme we see with a lot of the students who are trying the Japanese GG swing. Now, I know we did another video about this earlier. This is going to be a slightly different version of swing than that last player. Now, the hand path is definitely going to move out towards the golf ball like the last player. A little bit of that over rotation look as well is definitely there. But the way that this player is utilizing the club head and utilizing the face angle is definitely different than the last player but um you can definitely see some similarities and i think it's just going to help you guys because i know a lot of you guys out there are trying to do the japanese gg swing so hopefully this video will give you guys some value so the first thing i wanted to note is going to be the club face position at the top of the swing now if you can take a look here you can see that the toe is pointed down towards the ground now this club face position is what we would call a very weak or very open club face angle right what this means is that this player is going to have a hard time squaring up the club face because it's so open. So if you guys want to try this at home right now yourself, go ahead and get the same club face angle. You're going to find that you're going to have to really supinate this lead wrist to get that club face squaring up. Right. So again, the more you have to start supinating, the more compensations you start putting into the golf swing, the harder it is for you to time it, especially if you don't play golf for a living you guys are gonna have a hard time, right? So that's something that we would instantly target. And if you take a look at the after swing, you can see that the face angle is in a much different spot, right? It's a little bit more on the stronger, if anything, slightly closed slide, side, which for a player of this um, caliber is something that we typically do to start off the lesson series. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna end up with this face angle. It, this is just kind of something that we do whenever we see someone have a really weak face angle we're gonna fix that and you're gonna see that that face angle tends to affect quite a bit away of how the body moves, right? So moving on, another thing that we fixed with this player's backswing was gonna be their pressure at the top of the swing. When I'm talking pressure, I'm talking kind of toe to heel pressure. This player, if you take a look at the left and I'll draw a line on the um, toes to see if you guys can see this. Some of you guys might have some issues uh, seeing this, but essentially what's happening here is he has a lot of pressure out towards the toes. And again, whenever we see players with this type of model of swing, it, it's a pretty common thing to see that pressure moving out towards the toes a little early at the top of the swing. And then what we see is the pressure goes straight back to the heels really quickly in early transition, and they kind of get stuck on their heels. They don't really rotate too well, and uh, they lose control over the club face, and really they can't torque or force the club in an effective manner. Now, the last thing we changed with this top swing position, which I think is common for a lot of you guys out there trying the Japanese GG swing, is this internal rotation of the trail elbow, right? Basically this look right here. Now, the main reason why we don't like this internal rotation of the trail elbow for a lot of you guys out there, and let me specify, for you beginner to intermediate level golfers out there, is because you guys are under the assumption that if you do this, it's going to make it easier for the elbow to work into external rotation, which then is going to help you shell out the golf club. And you're going to see that this player, as an example, that this does not happen, right? So just because you're internally rotating your troll elbow has no correlation to whether or not you're actually going to shallow the golf club, right? For most of you guys out there, it actually, you could argue that there's a stronger correlation that it's going to make you more steep. But that's, again, just a personal opinion. You'd have to actually do some testing to see if that's true. But in my personal opinion and the students that I see, we typically see the club shafts getting pretty steep when, when this happens. So actually, you know, I'm, before we move on to transition, there's one last thing that I wanted to kind of talk about, which is going to be his after swing. So we were just referencing that we were trying to get the pressure a little bit away from the toes because he is too much out this way. As you can see, his pressure is a little bit more towards the heels at this top of swing position. He's a little bit more loaded into the heels, which is more so what we were trying to work on. Now, his pivot is still not quite ideal, right? Again, this is a... This is more so of a kind of beginner to intermediate level golfer. We still need to get the knees a little bit more extended here. Uh, but I like how the axis of the shoulders is chained. I like how the elbow is obviously in a much better spot. Club shaft pitch is better. Face angle is better, right? So he's done an overall really good job. But there's definitely still some things we need to touch up with that. But I just wanted to point that out for some of you guys out there. 
we're probably going to say something in the comments, right? I understand this is the first lesson. You can't change everything in one lesson. All right, so moving on. So the next big thing you're going to see is going to be the transition move, and it's going to be with the hand path, right? So again, if you guys have been watching this channel, you know that we see with the Japanese GG swing, the way that it's taught here in Japan is that you want to get the hand path working outwards towards the golf ball pretty much as soon as you possibly can, right? We, If you watched a couple videos ago with Tass, that's going to be the negative beta force. So if we take a look at this player, he is no exception, right? So hand path is not super far out compared to some of the uh, clients that we've been seeing recently, but still far enough out to where I think it's going to cause some issues. The middle of the hands is pretty much on this line, which for me is in front of the sternum, and that's just too far out for my personal preference. If you take a look at the after swing, we're going to see that the hands are a little bit more behind this line. So let me kind of zoom in here so you can kind of get a reference between the two, right? So the hands are a little bit more behind the line. And for a person who wants to hit a draw, you can maybe get the hands just a little bit more behind than this one on the right of your screen, right? So maybe just a little bit more. The middle of the hands could be back here, but he's in a much better spot. I'm really happy with kind of the change that I saw there. Another big thing that you can see right here is in the swing on the left, you can already see that he was starting to kind of extend the body and he was getting into that counterbalancing act, right? Too much pressure on the toes, moving back to the heels to kind of balance himself. Now you can see that he's staying in his, you could call it posture a little bit better. It just means that he's staying in his left side bend, front bend a little bit better through transition as opposed to kind of just extending and going this way. And now he's in this position five to where the hands aren't too far out towards the golf ball. Club shaft pitch is a little better. The face angle is a little bit more in a stronger position. And what we're going to see here is he's not going to come so much over it with the club head as he was before. And the, ultimately that just means this club head is going to enter into the golf ball from a more neutral place as opposed to coming in pretty far from the side of the golf ball. And that's going to give this player much more consistency once he starts getting used to it. So as we can see, let me demonstrate that. So before... From here to here, hand path now, he's trying to move the body away from the golf ball, right? He's doing everything in his power, really, to get the club head shallowing out, right? He doesn't want to crash and burn into the ground, as well as coming from the inside part of the ball. But again, it's a little bit too late, and as you can see, if we zoom in here, that club's coming in from the right part of the golf ball, and this current shot, he hit a hosel shank, right? So he had a couple, um, he told me he definitely had issues with shanks, um, not like not a huge problem, but he definitely had some issues with the shanks, and we saw a couple of them pop up while we were measuring his golf swing. So, again, really the biggest things were top of swing, face angle was really open, some pivot work, you know, pressure was a little bit too much to the toes, elbow was a little bit too much internally rotated, hand path worked a little bit out, and then all of this kind of accumulated to where he just really couldn't get that club coming from the inside. There's really no type of torque that he could put to get himself in a position to really um, come from the inside and not be, have an out to end path essentially. So that was the before. Let's go take a look at the after now. So from here, from position five into the golf ball, now we can see if anything, the club head's actually too far behind the hands. So again, remember first lesson guys, not everything's perfect, but at least he's not coming too far outside now, but now he's coming a little bit too far inside, but that's a good change and he enjoyed it because he was actually on flight scope starting to see some draw patterns. And then as he comes in the golf ball, you can see a much different entry into the golf ball than it was before, right? Before he was coming more from the outside, now he's coming more from the inside. Too much inside, I would say. Uh, but now he's starting to get contact again, a little bit more pure. He's getting into that draw pattern. This one overdrew a little bit, a little bit too far into out on this one on the right, but overall, for a first lesson, he did some major changes, right? And let me just take note of um, kind of the follow-through position, too. He did a much better job with this follow-through. One sec. Let me show you that. All right, before, a little bit more chicken-wingy through the shot, right? He stayed in right side lateral bend a little bit too much. But, yeah, I was really happy with this student's uh, before and afters in a short amount of time, right? This was a two-hour lesson. He did really good. So some take-home points for you guys who are trying to do the Japanese GG swing. First things first, if you're a beginner to intermediate level golfer and you struggle with contact and you struggle with curvature, I would focus on not getting that elbow too much internally rotated. I would try to get a little bit more in a neutral elbow position, right? It's going to look something maybe here to kind of here range, right? So don't go this way. Obviously, don't go this way as well. Somewhere right around here is a pretty neutral elbow position at the top. 
you're gonna have a lot easier time, I think, getting the elbow to move into the proper position on the downswing. Also, no matter who you are, no matter what swing you're trying to do, you gotta pay attention to the face angle, right? This was a huge issue in his, this player's golf swing, and just a simple different motion in the wrist changed that face angle, which then changed the path into the ball quite drastically, right? So make sure you're uh, taking note of that. And another important thing, is really where is your pressure toe to heel at the top of the swing? Are you too much on the toes, too much on the heels? Again, when you start getting outside the, um, that let's just call it box of okay, you're gonna start getting into places where you need to start moving your body away from the golf ball or towards the golf ball, depending on you know where that pressure is. And that's gonna really make it hard for you to start forcing and torquing the club at the bottom of the swing in the correct way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This player did a great job with these before and afters. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in future lessons and continuing this progress. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys again next time.